Hello, I'm Brent Ferris from the Bearded Man Studios, and previously you may have seen my chat, my online multiplayer chat in Unity. So that one's really old and it used the old Unity networking, so we're going to upgrade it so that it's using Forge Networking, uh, which is a free, open source, MIT license, no CCU cap, uh, unlimited use um, networking system that you can use for Unity. So let's start by creating our chat chat i'm just going to create a project called chat now this is going to be just a primitive chat example so you're going to have a full screen chat application where you can type messages and whoever else is connected sees them and vice versa now there are advanced tutorials for this for like doing slash commands like slash dice roll or slash coin flip uh filtering out bad words and also improving security overall for your multiplayer chat system uh, all of those are going to be inside of a link that you see in the description below, so check it out. Now, we're just going to get started with Forge. Let's get it all set up. Now, what you need to do is go to a specific web page here. The web page is in the description, and it is the Forge Networking GitHub repository. Just go here, scroll down until you see the Unity package. Ignore most used. I'm actually going to remove that link. We're going to use the most recent, which is going to be the most used uh, going forward. So click that and download it. I've got myself a copy and I'm going to import it. So it's imported and what we want to do is set up our build settings. So I'm going to press Control Shift B. Uh, you can also go to File, Build Settings. So I'm going to go to the player settings and turn on run in background. This is very important. Turn on run in background. If you're hosting a server and then you click away to some other application and it freezes, all the clients are going to just be frozen and not be able to communicate with each other. So you do want to run in background whenever you're doing networking stuff for sure. So check that first thing. Second thing is I'm going to go to the search box and type in menu for multiplayer menu. I'm going to drag that as the first item instead of our build. And then I'm going to create a new scene and save it. I'm going to save it inside of a folder called chat. I'm going to save it as a scene called chat. So now we can add that as the second scene. We have our project all set up and ready to go. So now let's go and do our UI. We want to just quickly do our UI treatment inside of our chat scene. Go ahead and right click, go to UI, and then go down to the input field, which will create our canvas and everything we need. We're going to make that input field stretch across the bottom. Now we're going to go over here and we're going to set our Y to 0. And we're going to set our left to 5, our position Y to 5, our right to 5, and our height, our height is going to remain at 30. So now we have a nice little input box down at the bottom that stretches for the whole thing. We're going to right click on Canvas, go to UI, and then we're going to find the scroll view and add that. Now let's make our scroll view span across the entire screen by clicking this one down here in the bottom corner. And we're going to make the left five, the top five, the right five, and the bottom uh, 40 so that it's a little bit higher than the text box. So we have this nice little boxing with some padding over here. It looks good. We're going to turn off horizontal because we're not going to scroll horizontally. It will also delete that scroll horizontal thing so it's just not there. Then we will open up our viewport and click on the content. We do want a content size fitter on that with a vertical fit of preferred size and we also want a vertical layout group on this with the width and height checked for the control child size and for the control the child force expand we only want the width not the height we'll add some padding in here so five 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 and five that should be a good amount of padding and now we will right click on content go to UI and create text I'll name this message. This is the message that's going to show up here in this top corner. We're going to add in a layout element. We're not going to check any boxes or anything. Just leave it as layout element. We're also going to check the size. So if I highlight this and paste it a bunch of times, see how it nicely wraps. That's exactly what we want. We're going to change the content or the text inside of this text uh, to zero uh, colon one so that's uh, curly brackets around a zero colon curly brackets around a one we're doing this because we're going to use this string for our formatting string on the other side so when we send it across the network it uses this as our text format now drag your message into your chat folder to make a prefab delete it from your scene and then save 
Now for some cleanup stuff real quick, we're going to go to the input field and the line type, we're going to do multi line new line so that we prepare for that and we don't forget about it later. We're going to begin with our code now and we're going to create a network behavior called chatter manager. To do this, we're going to go to window forge networking network contract wizard. You'll notice there's a chat manager in here. Ignore that, that's a default one that comes with Forge uh, to get you up and running. But we're creating our own here, so we're gonna hit Create. And we're gonna call it Chatter Manager. It has to have the same, uh, different name than the one that's in there so that they don't collide. We're gonna add an RPC, and we're gonna call it Transmit Message. And we're gonna add two fields that are strings one is going to be called username and the other is going to be called message. Now, uh, if you don't know how to use Forge Networking, I highly suggest that you click the link below to join our Discord. Go to docs.forgepower.com, learn all about this stuff. But in this tutorial, rather than going all over Forge, since we have plenty of other tutorials for that, we're just going to go over how to make chat. So let's save and compile and let's continue with our adventure. Uh, no thanks. Don't mess with my code. Leave my code the way it is. Now instead of the chat folder, right click and go to create C sharp script and we're gonna call this chatter manager. So it's nice and easy. And let's open that guy up and begin to edit it. We do not need any of this. We do not need any of that. And instead of mono behavior, it's gonna be chatter manager uh, behavior. And we're going to be using, oh, control period we're going to be using beardmanstudios.forge.networking.generated because we generated this this class here you'll notice this becomes red that's because we need to implement our rpc so let's implement our rpc which resides in this guy here let's get rid of these things we're not using now before we implement let's uh make our two fields that we need we're going to make a public transform uh, I guess we were needing that Unity Engine one. Chat content. And then we're going to make a public game object chat message. The chat content is the transform where the chat message is going into. It's that content that we saw instead of the UI. And the chat message is the prefab that we created. So just so you know, we're going to need those. So let's begin to write our transmit message. This is actually the RPC that we get across the network, which means that it contains our username and message inside of it. So we're going to do string username is equal to args dot get next string and then string message is equal to args dot get next string. So now we have our username and our message inside of some variables. We want to do a little bit of sanitation. So we're going to say if the string is null or empty, username or string that is null or empty, message. Well, we don't really want to do anything with this. We don't want to print this out. It's wasteful. There's nothing in it. So the message or username was empty. So do not display this message to anyone. Now that we've covered that that very basic sanitation. Of course, if you want to do more sanitation and authoritative one, I suggest check out the advanced tutorials. For now, we're doing it uh, nice and simple. So we're going to do game object new message is equal to instantiate. And we are going to instantiate that chat message that we uh, have a variable for, a member variable. And the parent is going to be the content, so chat content. And we want to get the text uh, component off of that chat message that we just created. So we're going to do text and of course we're going to have to import the unity engine.ui namespace so we can use it. Content is equal to new message dot get component text. So we're going to get that text component. Lastly, we're going to format that string so that it prints out to the user uh, correctly. So content dot text is equal to string dot format content.text. Remember we use those curly brackets, the, bra the curly bracket zero, curly bracket one. That's This is where this comes into play. That's our string format that we're going to use. We're going to pass in the username and the message for that string format. 
Now we have the function for receiving the message across the network. Let's make our function for sending the message across the network. So we're gonna do public void write message. So we write our message. We're gonna take an input field in, input file, input field, and we're gonna call it sender. Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do a little bit of sanitation and we're gonna we're gonna send this message across the network. So if not string is null or empty, sender.text and the sender.text.trim. Trim just gets rid of the white space at the beginning and end. Length is greater than zero, which means there is text in there and it's not just a blank string. We're gonna go ahead and replace any kind of return carriages. Um, notice I say go ahead a lot. So we're gonna go ahead and go ahead. So sender.text is equal to sender.text.replace. Uh, we're gonna replace the slash r with string.empty, so it's gonna be blank. And we're also gonna replace slash in with the same string.empty. Now that we've sanitized it a little bit, got rid of the new line, because we don't need that, we're gonna do the new, no, not new, the network object, network object. This is actually a member variable of the generated class we have here. That's why we have access to this random member variable. We use this to send our RPCs across the network. So we're gonna call this send RPC message, our function, and we're gonna do RPC underscore transmit message. Notice that transmit message matches this transmit message. This is a generated constant which tells us which function we're gonna be sending across in the network. We're gonna do receivers all because everybody should get this message. We'll say the username is Brent for now. Remember the first argument was username and the second argument was the message. So we're gonna send our message. There we go. And I guess we could put this trim up here, but I'll just leave it here for now. Now, we are going to actually sender.txt, we're gonna blank that out because when we press enter, we wanna get rid of that text that you see uh, inside of the, uh, what's it called, the input field. And we wanna make it go blank. Now, when you press return and this happens, your input field may lose focus. And so you know how in like chat systems, you like type a message, you press enter, you type another message, you press enter, you keep doing that and you can send a lot of messages. We want that. And if you type a message, you press enter, and you lose focus on your input field, you can't type another message without clicking on the input field. So to fix that, we say sender dot activate. No, not activate. Activate input. How am I spelling this? A C T I V A T E. There we go. Activate input field. And that will do it for this class. And we're going to be ready to do the input field class next. So without further ado, we will jump over to Unity and let this thing compile out. We're gonna go up into our console, check for any errors. We got no errors. That's good. Now we're actually gonna use the script. So we're gonna create a new chatter manager game object and we're gonna drop our chatter manager onto that. Now for the magic, we're gonna open up our scroll view viewport and here's our content. So we're gonna drag that content as the chat content and we're gonna drag our prefab message as the chat message. Now that's all set up, we are ready to make our input field work. So we wanna make it so that when we press the enter key or the return key, it will send our message. So to do that, we're just gonna hook into the value changed event inside of the input field itself. So if we go over to input field, there is a value change that we can do here. I'm gonna to go to create C sharp script and I will call this chat input field. Nice and simple. Let's open that up for editing. Open up our curly brackets, get rid of this stuff, and let's do public chatter manager, chat manager. Let's get a reference to that chatter manager. Private input field, no, input field. Let's using Unity Engine UI, input field. There we go, spell it right. And then we're gonna get the reference to that input field on start. So private void start input field is equal to get component input field. Awesome. Now let's do our value changed, public void value changed. Our value has changed, so what are we gonna do? 
if the input field dot text, if that input field text contains a slash in, which is a new line character, meaning I pressed return or enter, remember we went in there and made it a multi-line uh, chat thing. So if it detects a slash in, we're gonna do a chat manager, write message, and we are going to send our input field. There we go. Nice and simple. This is all the code we need in here. We're gonna jump back into Unity. Go to our input field, drop our chat input field script onto it. Notice it has a chat manager here. We're gonna drag our chat manager there. And lastly, on value changed, we're gonna hit the plus. We're gonna drag our input field into the object. Go down to the functions, go to chat input field and value changed. Now we are ready to test out our stuff. I believe we are done. Let's build it out and find out. So I'm gonna do just a control shift B and I'm gonna build, make a folder builds. I'm gonna call this chatter and let's build it out. Set this to a decent size to easily see here. Start it up. Now what you will notice is when I start a server, it will ask me for a Windows firewall prompt to allow me through the Windows firewall. We wanna say yes to that obviously, otherwise we can't communicate over the network. Now this menu you see here is the multiplayer menu um, that you saw us add to the build settings previously. It comes with Forge, so you don't have to worry too much about it. It's right here. Um, so that's what this is. It's just out of the box. So I'm going to click on host. I'm going to type in test. When I send that, you're going to see it says Brent and test. So it has been sent. Now Brent is hard coded and I would imagine that you would like for it not to be hard coded. So let's make it say server if it's the server and client if it's the client. So here inside of the chatter manager script, we're gonna add in a private string username and we're gonna do protected override and we're gonna override the network start. This is a function that is inside of the base class for the behaviors. And this is called whenever your object is created up on the network and it's ready to go. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say if network object is server username is going to be equal to server else the username is going to be equal to client so it's nice and simple and then let's get rid of Brent and put in username and let's save that out and jump back to unity and see how it goes okay so here I built out a new version I'm gonna click host and do test from server so now we have our server message. Let's let's start up a second instance um, and let's go from there. Okay, so I've started up two instances here that we are going to use. I'm gonna host with one and I'm gonna connect with the other and say, hello from server, which you'll see come across and then hello from client. How are you doing? There we go. So now we have a chat message going from the server to the client and vice versa and everybody sees it. If we had more clients, they'd all be named client. So you probably want to update the username to be a more unique username, like let the user put in their name and just use that or something like that. So thanks for watching. That's the end of this tutorial. If you want to see the advanced tutorial with the slash commands like slash coin flip or the uh, authentic, the, the server authoritative bad word filter and all of that kind of stuff, check out the advanced tutorials in the link below. And until next time, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you then. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. I wanted to talk about the advanced tutorials real quick to tell you what was inside of them. Um, they're in the description below. Basically what we'll go over is a bad word filter so that you can uh, have it so that when people type in bad words, you get rid of them, put little asterisks or prevent the message. We're also gonna go over how you can let your users type in their own username and that'll be their username on the server and the server will be authoritative. It'll tell them, yes, okay, that's your username, and it will be responsible for passing the username rather than the client passing that username. We'll also go over some advanced topics on setting the username, such as setting the username onto the player itself so that it, it's tracked by the player object. And we'll also go over slash commands. So you could do slash coin or slash dice roll or whatever, and it'll do like a coin flip or a dice roll, and it'll print out the message as if like it was a message from the server. It was something that's special that no one else can type. They can't just type, uh, I, I rolled four. 
So we go through all of those in the advanced tutorials. Be sure to check them out. There's some extra knowledge in there to be learned about Forge networking, some of the authoritative commands, how you can block RPC calls, like if someone sends an RPC, how you can stop it or how you can modify it before it gets replicated to everybody. And a few other things that where like network start is, is used for things for that need to happen after the network has been set up. Those kind of things you'll learn inside of the chat uh, advanced tutorials. So if you have any questions, please let me know. I can always add to the, the advanced tutorials so that you'll be able to get those. The source code will be over there with the advanced tutorials as well. So thank you again so much for watching. Until next time, I'll see you later.